everyone. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Miss Yolanda and I am here today to talk about creativity. And well, I mean, being, might not be the best at drawing self-portraits. What do you think? Well, but that doesn't mean that I'm not filled with creativity. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. And even though I might not be great at drawing, I'm still a masterpiece and so are you. God is so creative and he made us to be just like him. So when we use our creativity, we show the world what he is like. So for our game today, friends, I'd like to see how creative all of you are. So I'm gonna have you pause this video in a minute and go grab some building materials. It can be Legos or blocks or marshmallows or Play-Doh or anything you wanna build with. Okay, pause this video and go get your supplies. You ready? Go. Okay, you got your supplies? Okay, you've got two minutes to use whatever you have to use your creative building skills to build the best tower you can. Are you ready? Ready, set, go! I wish I could see all of them, but I know they must be very creative because you guys are masterpieces. And even though you had different building materials, you all built super cool towers. You have amazing creativity. So right now, let's get on our feet and worship and thank God for creating us to be so creative.
story today starts with a man named Paul. Paul didn't always believe in Jesus, and for years Paul actually tried to stop people from following Jesus. But once Paul became a follower of Jesus, he traveled all over to teach people and encourage them to follow Jesus too. Paul started a church in a city called Ephesus, and later he went back for several years to stay and teach other people about Jesus. The believers in Ephesus were from different backgrounds, and the one thing they had in common was that they believed in Jesus. But Paul got in trouble with the Roman government for talking about Jesus, and he ended up in jail. He wrote letters to the churches he had started, including the Ephesians, and he reminded them that God created us to do good things for others. Listen to these words from his letter to the Ephesians. It's in the Bible in Ephesians 2.10. Let's read. We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. You see, you are a masterpiece of God. In His image, He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. We were created to have a relationship with God, and that's only possible because Jesus died on the cross for our sins. So what do we do now? Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. You were created, designed, and shaped to do good things and love other people. Let's learn about this as we watch our Bible lesson. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10. When the Apostle Paul wrote his letter to the believers in Ephesus, he told them, We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now, we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Let's see how that might play out in someone's life today. Nora Gray followed her older cousin, Sadie, around the pottery studio. Clay dust danced in the sunbeams from high up windows. So I just stay at the desk? Working at the Earth and Fire studio was Nora's first real job, and she wanted to get it right. Sadie grinned and pushed back her hair with a clay-flecked hand. Mostly. A bunch of artists have memberships here, so they can use all the equipment and materials. You'll answer questions, take calls, make orders when supplies run out, things like that. What's in there? Nora pointed to an open door near the back of the studio. Oh yes, the closet. Nora led the way over. Sadie peered inside. Wow. The narrow room was lined on both sides with high shelves. Every shelf and every inch of floor space was cramped with a jumble of tools, containers of clay and glazes, cleaning supplies, and pieces of pottery, finished and unfinished. How do you find anything? So many people use the closet. Everyone just kind of has their own system. Nora didn't think the disaster in the closet qualified as a system, but before she could say anything. Oh, I gotta take this. Hello? Oh, hold on a sec. Where did I put my pen? Frazzled. Sadie checked her pockets. Nora quickly pulled a pen and notepad out of her neatly organized backpack. Would this work? Sadie snatched the pen and paper, mouthing, thank you, and headed for the desk. Nora surveyed the room. There were at least a dozen artists at work. You a butter too? Nora turned to see an older gentleman with a streak of clay in his curly white hair. His long frame bent nearly double over the nearest pottery wheel. Me? No. Oh, I think everyone's an artist of some kind. I can't even draw a stick figure. Sadie's just letting me work here till I go to college in the fall. Nelson centered a lump of clay on his wheel. You'll see me here most every morning. I'm Nelson. Nora. Real nice to have you here. I'm uh, working on a coffee mug if you'd like to watch. 
Nora watched, mesmerized, as the spinning clay morphed from a stodgy lump to a smooth cylinder under Nelson's practice hands. I wish I could make beautiful things like that. You want to take a turn? Sadie tried to teach me. It was a disaster. Nelson smiled, hands still working the clay. I happen to believe that God made each of us to create beautiful things that matter. You'll find your spot. Nora nodded, but she didn't think she'd ever create a piece of art that could make someone smile. Nora, I want to show you the kiln. Sadie reappeared, and Nora spent the rest of the day learning the ropes of her new job. By early evening, the studio had cleared out. You go home. I can lock up at six, just like you showed me. Well... And I can order more blue glaze, like you said. Well, if you think you got this, that would be great. I can get home early for dinner with the kids. I'm good. Go, shoo. With a wave, Sadie hurried out. Nora opened the supplier's webpage and started to order for glaze. Hmm, I bet there's still blue glaze in the closet somewhere. Nora opened the door and clicked on the light. The mess looked even worse than it had that morning. Is this glaze? Oh, it's those cans. And there's some over here and up there. Nora edged her way around, collecting cans. There's no way to know what's really here unless I can get it all together. I should clear a space. And I should stack those crates to group the colors. Every time Nora moved one can or tool, she discovered six more that needed a place to go. All the cleaning supplies can go down here, modeling tools and loops over there by the door. That's definitely trash. Oh, and there should be a spot for each artist to put their pieces that still need to be glazed. One thing led to another, and another, and another. Nora finally realized she was hungry. Hmm, where did I set my phone? Oh, here, 9.30? Nora had been so focused on organizing the closet, she had completely lost track of time. She glanced with satisfaction at the crate containing five cans of blue glaze. At least I don't need to order more glaze. The next morning, Nora arrived a few minutes late. She rushed in, apologetic. I'm so sorry, Sadie, I- Nora broke off as she saw Sadie, Nelson, and several other artists grouped around the closet door. Nora, did you do this? Um, yeah, uh, I should have asked. Nora, this is amazing! Nora took a step forward to take a good look at what she's done. Glazes and clay, tools and supplies, everything had its own spot in a orderly rhythm. With the morning light streaming in, it did look pretty cool. Nelson grinned. Oh, it's beautiful, Nora. A real work of art. A younger woman with hair knotted on top of her head chimed in. Plus, we can find stuff now. I thought I'd lost this set of mugs. You've made our work a lot easier. Really? I guess. I thought anyone could do this. No way. You have a real gift. Can I organize the front desk? Please, I'm raising your pay. Nora happily tackled her next project, a well-organized desk. She was grateful to discover the truth of Ephesians 2.10 in her own life. We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now, we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Think about the things you like to do the most. Think about the things that come easy to you. For example, Maybe people always say that you make them laugh. Like, I make you laugh with my silly jokes, right? I know, sometimes they're not that silly. Well, you can use your sense of humor to brighten someone's day. If maybe somebody you know isn't feeling good, you can use your creativity and make them a get well card. If your parents are really tired from being at work all day, find a creative way to help them with dinner or chores so that they can get some rest. If your best friend is really sad, Use your creative and kind words to make them smile. Ask your parents how they've seen creativity in you and ask God to show you new ways that you can use your creativity. He's made you in a unique and amazing way. 
so that you can help the people around you. God created you so you can be creative. Well, so how are you going to use your creativity to do that? He made us to be like him so we can show the world around what he's like. God is creative and he gave us the ability to be creative too. God gave amazing creativity to each one of us and we can use it to love him and to love others. God created you so you can be creative. Let's pray and thank God for that. Dear God, we can look around at everything you've made and see how creative you are. Thank you for giving us the ability to be creative too. Please help us see the needs of the people around us and please help us see how we can use our creativity to lend a hand. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, friends, thank you so much for another great weekend at Wave at Home. I will see you next weekend. Mwah! A few more things that we want you to know about. We have a great opportunity to serve our friends in nursing homes. They have been feeling lonely and sad lately and your art would really brighten their day. Mail it to the church or drop it by the front office. Do you have a prayer request? We are praying for our Twin Lakes kids' families. If there are any specific prayer requests you have, head to tlc.org slash kids to send us yours. Every Friday on Facebook and Instagram is Funny Friday. That means we need your best jokes. Head to our website to submit your funniest jokes to have them featured on Funny Friday. We have something new for you every day at Twin Lakes Kids on Instagram and Facebook. We have daily devos, worship song of the day, and then something fun and themed every other day of the week. Don't miss out, so follow us on Facebook and Instagram.